Hey, what's up guys, Arab here. Welcome back to my Let's Talk F1 series here today. In this video, we're looking at the Red Bull RB15, the 2019 challenger for the Red Bull racing team. Obviously this year powered by Honda for the first time and driven by Max Verstappen and Pierre Gasly for the first time in 2019. And well, what a striking looking car it is. And once again, Red Bull have launched with a one-off livery for the launch. or I don't know if it's a testing livery or just a launch livery. Obviously last year, they launched with literally a launch livery which they only used for the launch day and then they turned up to pre-season testing with an actual uh, season livery. I don't know if this is a launch livery or a testing livery, whatever the case, they've called it a one-off livery which is very striking, very uh, artistic in a way with the way the, the bulls themselves are very kind of mo mosaic kind of style, simplified, very geometrical shaped uh, and all the red and uh, kind of matte and not matte lines trying to shroud some shapes obviously but uh, uh, you know, we've, we're going to delve in, obviously, and analyze it aerodynamically. And it does look to be a very tasty car, as obviously Red Bull would, uh, would be. They're pretty much the kings of aerodynamics and chassis, uh, as it were, in the last era of Formula 1, really. And uh, it's, uh, this year, I don't think it's going to be any different. I think the Red Bull car will be very strong. And uh, I th uh, I hope that it's going to be able to take the fight to Ferrari and Mercedes. But that remains to be seen, obviously. Only time will tell in testing. But let's look at this car in depth and see what's what then it's. Uh, got a, very, a lot of intriguing things about it, so let's dive into it. So we're going to start off back here on the uh, diagonal photo. There's not actually too many different angles. There's only two different angles I've got of the Red Bull from the official photos. There are some photos of the car running on track in their shakedown at Silverstone, but um, I don't think they're going to be any more useful than these studio photos. So, But this should suffice us. So we're going to start off at the front end, then we've got a small little hole for the S-duct entry there. So if you don't know, the S-duct takes air from the front of the car and uh, injects it to the top side, that injection of air induces some mixing and that fresh kind of air basically essentially at the top of the chassis and that tries to keep the flow attached on the top end here but they've got a very intriguing air stock here because you'll be able to see it more maybe from the other angle but they've got a kind of double outlet uh, on the uh, air stock outlet so usually there is this usual bump which lets air out, you know, injects air this way towards the rest of the car but they've also got a hole on the other side of the outlet and it looks like a secondary outlet or I, I don't know almost like a pass through uh, inlet in a way like maybe the air is going to flow straight through here so any air that doesn't enter through this hole and it doesn't get through to the other sides of the car on either side of the chassis if somehow it gets scooped up by the actual nose cone structure itself maybe it passes through potentially I don't know we've had a case like this remember in 2012 I think it was Red Bull had a bit of an entryway like this when they had that step nose solution and that really didn't even go to any Thing. So I don't really know what it is. Uh, I've not seen any tech guys on Twitter either kind of deduce what it is, but a very intriguing S-duct nonetheless. And so far the most intricate and interesting S-duct of, of the, any car that's launched really. They've got a, a, the usual turning vanes, but I, I want to say that this turning vane a bit more looks like a bit like a snowplow in a way like the Mercedes cars got. Definitely from the uh, front facing view, it looks a bit more of like a plow kind of uh, winglet that attaches to the normal turning vanes that would be there underneath the suspension arm, so a bit of a different way Red Bull maybe gone about it to uh, last year, potentially, or maybe it's just the first time I'm seeing it in that kind of way, potentially from this angle, but as we move on then the, to the middle of the car, apologies for the picture being a little bit blurry, it's not the best high-res photo Red Bull could have given us uh, weird enough, the front view is really high-res, and this side view is not so much. Right, so we're going to look on the bargeboard area first of all, before moving to the side pod end plates and whatnot, so despite the new height regulations obviously, that, that's why you'll see every car has nothing going on around this area of the car. Uh, despite that, Red Bull have still got their entire overbearing wing uh, kind of like, I guess people call it a boomerang in a way, uh, they're, they're a huge wing that comes off the chassis, it's literally connected to the chassis, and comes across and connects to, right on the edge uh, bargeboard element, so last year they had this boomerang ring, which was around here, this height, just underneath the Aston Martin logo, and it actually fed towards the inlet, rather here now they've got this uh, boomerang ring that's lower but still sits the entire lengthways of the bargeboard area, and connects to the outer bargeboard uh, plank there, so they've done really well actually in that kind of regard, and then they've got the very intricate dagger array of multiple slot gaps in the actual barge wall to try and cut the drag through. Obviously, the the Red Bull has always, in historically, always had to try and cut drag because you know before the Renault engine wasn't that powerful. Obviously, we don't know how powerful the Honda engine is going to be. I've I've said many times I feel like the Honda engine by the end of last season 
was actually faster and more powerful than the Renault engine. So I think the Red Bull actually will go very, very well this year. And they might not actually they might not actually have to compromise so much maybe over the circuits in terms of drag versus downforce they want to produce. But they've got uh, multiple slot gaps in their bargeboard elements, a very intricate array from Red Bull, but it's very similar to, to last year, very evolution in that kind of respect of that. All pretty much the difference is having to obviously be lower down for this new height. And I can't tell if this is paintwork or that's an actual small little bargeboard. I think that's just paintwork because I'm pretty sure that part of the car is outlawed for any bargeboard elements there. So some interesting paintwork. If it is a bargeboard element, it's a very tight, tightly uh, wound one basically onto the chassis side, yeah. But uh, yeah, this entire area very much an evolution of last year, apart from chopped off here. They've got a bit of an, a Renault style, almost like an Aero Cat kind of shape here, because Renault used to have a very infamous Aero Cat that went like that, uh, kind of came up like this and curved backwards and then upwards. So they've kind of almost mimicked that. And they've done away with the three element prong array, which was very similar to what Mercedes ran. Mercedes and Red Bull always had a very similar uh, three pronged connected uh, end plate of the side pod here. And so so Mercedes have continued that trend, but they've cut it off. Whereas Red Bull have just gone away from that concept. They've got one singular upright here, and then they've got this different looking shape to what they had last year uh, that connects to this uh, winglet coming off the chassis. So a bit of a different style for them. What's not a different style is they've maintained the two pretty much aeroplane-like wings that kind of stick out very uh, obtrusely uh, with the end plate on the edge. The ones that Renault have kind of copied on their car now for this year. And so that remains to, to the the same way, so encouraging mixing on the top of the side pod and the end plate, especially trying to also tighten up and clean up the air and kind of focus it on the pin, the tip vorti, uh, vortice that gets created here on, on the outer edge. But uh, when we come to the actual inlet itself, again, the small same inlet that Red Bull ran last year, very similar sized inlet, I would say, but the actual side pod themselves I would say they've even somehow got a little bit smaller in a way. That might just be my, my eyes playing tricks on me. They might be the exact same size as last year, but they definitely look like they've sunk in even more to last year in a way. Like when I first saw the pictures without any of the brightening up, I just thought, does this car even have side pod inlets? Like, it doesn't even look like it's running many side pod inlets at all. So, uh, yeah, they've really, I've tried to get the geometry shape, and you can see at this point in the car, it really sinks deep in. So I feel like Red Bull and Honda have really worked worked very well in tandem obviously like a work you know Honda uh, and Red Bull pretty much are, uh, like a works team working together and so they've really worked hard on packaging on that car and Adrian Newey has done his uh, magic there with Honda to really pack that car tightly and obviously Honda that reliability was uh, still an issue a little bit here and there last year for Toro Rosso when uh, they were running the Honda engines for the first time so that's gonna that's gonna be something that might come into play Horner has said he'd rather have a fast car that they had to take a few penalties on uh, than not have a fast car so they there you go. That they've gone aggressive with their philosophy. Uh, are going aggressive again with their philosophy on the wing mirrors. Now you can't from this kind of uh, a load of yellow. You can't really see where the wing mirror is. It's actually here. This entire thing is the wing mirror. So what they've done is they've got one attachment here that comes to the edge of the wing mirror, and they've got another uh, uh, wing. So they've got a two pronged attachment like uh, Mercedes, like Haas have done uh, onto the side pod and onto the chassis. But with the actual mirror themselves, they've got like a, a shrouding and a housing over it. They've got this element that's separate from this housing here. It's very hard to tell on this very blurry picture. Hopefully there'll be a more zoomed in shot that you guys can look at online eventually. But essentially they're trying to let air pass through up and above of the mirror. Very much like Ferrari tried to do. Uh, but they've gone even further by making the entire housing of the wing mirror aerodynamically positive. You know, they're trying to flex it in a way on the left hand side here to try and induce some vortices. Maybe try and push the air the way they wanted to. The same thing here with the way this part is disconnected from the rest. They've been very, very clever and very aggressive with the way they've housed the mirror there. I really like it. And then uh, the actual housing itself where the inlet is. The inlet's uh, somewhere around here, but they've got this element that comes out and overbearing, which is just, uh, you know, to try and push them there to where they want it to get to. And then the upright connecting the two, and then it connects on to this outside piece here. So you might have to see what I mean a little bit more maybe from the front end there, but a very nice kind of housing situation uh, for Red Bull. They're shrouding 
leaving the inlet essentially and letting some air pass through straight through here rather than going through the inlet. There's a little bit of a, a cubby hole in a way that shoots air through. Um, so very, very nice uh, side pod and bargewood area for Red Bull, as you would imagine there. This is what I meant by that mosaic kind of Red Bull artistry. And then in the rear end, I just wanted to point out again, like with the Honda packaging, even at the rear end, like they did with last year's Renault, they've really tried to sucker in the exit as well, really not leave much room for imagination there on the rear end where the exhaust comes out. They've only got one single uh, connection point to the rear wing there, and they've not done anything fancy with a T-wing or, mon or monkey wing there like Mercedes did on the launch earlier today in the video I did on the Mercedes W10, but uh, remains to be seen if something crops up in pre-season testing. And then on the rear wing, finally, they've gone for that, what pretty much a lot of teams are going for, which is that, you know, McLaren Ferrari style overhanging uh, slot gaps in the rear wing to try and cut some drag and also have some aero efficiency basically on the rear end for a lot of circuits where they want to produce the downfall still, but still try and cut some drag and try not to control the wake a little bit there. Uh, and then apart from that, very simplistic actually, no slot gaps I can see so far uh, on the Red Bull car. So maybe that's to come later on or maybe they're just not going to bother with it. A few times Red Bull did go the other way compared to teams where some teams had slots and, uh, and fancier stuff uh, around the car. Red Bull sometimes didn't just bother going for it because they're producing so much more downforce elsewhere around the car. But yeah, a very intricate looking Red Bull there on the diagonal view. When we come down to the front view and you can see probably very clearly on the video, it's a lot more high res. So thanks for that Red Bull. I don't know why you did that, but there you go. Uh, the front wing itself, obviously the simple front wing, but like Mercedes, like I said, a bit more curvature to the Red Bull compared to the other teams like maybe Toro Rosso. Uh, Renault actually definitely had the most, the most sculpted front wing so far, but Red Bull here opting for that classic Red Bull shape actually tapering in as you come in through. You know, they're trying to create these little flicks of vortices, trying to go downstream towards the barge wall area. And this is what I meant by the turning veins. This is why I feel like they've got a bit of a, more of a snowplow shape uh, compared to last year because they've got this kind of floor to the turning veins that's going to help guide some air towards their barge wall area. And then, like I said, that kind of dagger array, a lot of slot gaps. You've got about one, two, three, four, five elements here of daggers on the very bottom of the barge wall floor, but that's very much a crossover and evolution of last year. If we zoom in a little, you can see this is the S duct shape I was talking about. They've got uh, they've got an outlet or an inlet on the front face of the S duct, let alone the actual proper outlet, which is a usual usually a conventional S duct outlet. So very peculiar. Um, we'll see how that goes, and uh, I'll be intrigued to see if any uh, actual proper uh, tech analysts that do this for a living will be able to figure out what on earth that is for, basically. But we come through then to the side pod radio, and just again you can see that really sucking in shape of the side pod. Look how much space there is for just activities of the air basically on this outside face of the Red Bull and that is pretty much the shaping of the inlet and it's just so tiny. Just It's just really, really tiny. And then on the left hand side just highlighting the wing on the top face there. They've got the one uh, more uh, thicker bulging wing coming out on the bottom floor of the inlet to attach up to that out outright like I said and this is where the uh, boomerang wing comes through and attaches to that outside face there on the left hand side and then they've got this uh, wing mirror like I said you can see without the yellow stuff a little bit clearer maybe what, what, what it looks like there from the outside I'm trying to pick out the geometry shapes there and it's just so intricate you've got this separate shape here on the right hand side if you look and then you've got this shrouding cover here and then you've got the two the, the two elements that connect it in, it, in in itself you can see this upright is good and these two uprights are gonna you know obviously get uh, the air is gonna get affected by these two uprights and create some vorticity on the top end there as well as this wing coming across Cross there, so they've been very clever by the way they've gone about that, and then uh, pretty much the, the the picture gets a bit li little bit defocused from the front to the to the back uh, uh, to the back side, but not not much to really uh, talk about on the rear end apart from like I mentioned already on the rear wing. But uh, yeah, very peculiar Red Bull front end. I'm sure it'll look a little bit more like a classic Red Bull once we get to the uh, actual preseason testing or the or the race day on Australia with the usual yellow and red Red Bull. But actually, something I didn't I, actually something I forgot to mention mentioned was on the floor, they've got these two slot gaps just ahead of the rear tyres. So like Ferrari and Torosso, we've seen playing around with big slot gaps in the floor. That'll be another area that Red Bull, I feel, will exploit quite a lot there to try and get efficiency on the rear end between the rear tyre and the rear wing. If they, can get, if they can get a vacuum seal through this area, the better the diffuser works. And also trying to clean up some air as it goes towards the rear end of the car. And also trying to duck it, some, some it, duck it underneath the car where a lot of work goes on uh, without you guys knowing. But a very aggressive looking Red Bull car and I think, well, with a partnership with Honda, I for one have some, you know, positive hopes that they can finally take a bit of a fight to Ferrari and 
Mercedes, but obviously there remains to be seen. We'll see what happens in pre-season testing and whatnot. But guys, if you did enjoy the video and found it informative, then be sure to smash that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you are new around here, do subscribe for weekly Formula content. I'm Aaron Hope you're interested today, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.